Hello, my name is Frank Kutka. I'm a faculty member at College of Menominee Nation, and I'm a plant breeder as well. And today I am joined by my co-workers from the Sustainable Development Institute, and we are going to talk about how it is that we pollinate corn in order to maintain traditional varieties when we want to grow more than one at a time. Okay, corn is a wind-pollinated plant. It is an outcrosser. It is not adapted to being inbred. It's not really very well adapted to selfing. To stay vigorous, we have to maintain it in a diverse situation. If we get selfing and inbreeding, we get plants that are more like this. These, this is an actual self line. And you can see rather than being tall and vigorous like the plants over here, we have very, very short plants that are not terribly vigorous. They're very uniform. They will not be very productive. We do inbreeding in the breeding process sometimes, but to maintain a variety, you want to avoid this at all costs. So we're going to pollinate as many plants as we can and try to get at least 100, better to get 200 ears every year to maintain our traditional varieties so that we maintain all the diversity and prevent the inbreeding depression. The corn plant has both male and female inflorescences or um, flowering shoots. The tassel at the top is the male inflorescence. It is composed of many dozens, if not hundreds, of male flowers, each of which will put out an anther that will shed pollen. Down below on modern varieties, we have the ear shoot, which is a collection of female flowers. The silks, as you see, uh, one each for each of the female flowers will uh, gather the pollen and the pollen will grow down the silk. Fertilization will take place and eventually we'll get new seeds. So in order to do controlled pollinations, we have to bag the silks before they're exposed to pollen. These silks already out in the air are much too late. This plant could no longer be uh, hand pollinated with any sort of uh, confidence that we'd get the correct uh, genotype in the seeds. This tassel, which is fully exerted, is one to watch, but it is not ready to be bagged. Uh, there would be uh, no likelihood of getting any pollen tomorrow because we haven't seen anything open yet. Generally, when we're going to bag a tassel, we want to see that at least a few anthers have started to pop open, and then we're pretty confident we can get some pollen the next day. This tassel is flowering. You can see anthers are hanging loose and there are probably a few more florets that will open tomorrow. This tassel is ready to be bagged and could be bagged for a collection of pollen to be used tomorrow morning. To collect the pollen we use, we will use tassel bags. So these are large bags. They are made commercially specifically for collecting pollen. They're a heavyweight paper that can handle most weather. There's some weather they can't handle, but they're pretty decent. The evening before we want to do the pollinations, we'll go to tassels such as this one that are already starting to shed, that we think will shed tomorrow, and we're gonna cover them with the bag. So we open the bag up, down over the tassel, and then fold the bag carefully, very tightly against the stem and then I like to use paper clips to hold the bag on. I learned that trick from Sherry Norman at Cornell University. Uh, paper clips are easy, they're reusable, and you never have to uh, tear bags open if they're stapled or cut your fingers on staples. And that's it. So it will sit there and uh, the next day we should have pollen in there and we'll be ready to go. Okay, one of the nemeses of uh, hand pollinators is the flag leaf. So you can see this ear shoot has these long flag leaves. These are actual leaves that, will, that are formed at the end of the husks. Um, in order to put a shoot bag on and cover this, we don't really want to cover just these leaves. We want to cover where the silk's going to be, which will come out over here. So we'll cut those flag leaves off and then put the shoot bag on, and then we'll have a much lower risk of the flag leaves pushing the bag off of the ear and exposing the silks until we're ready. 
In order to prepare the ear shoots, the female flowers, for pollinating, we have to get there before the silks show. So here on this plant, we can see ear shoots, but no silk. So this is a good time to put the bags on. Uh, bags are about this size. They're waxed paper and you can see through them. They're translucent to tell if silks are present later on, which is a, a critical piece of the story. Anyway, um, some kinds of varieties, you can just stuff these in here. I don't do that. I learned this again from Sherry Norman at Cornell University. So um, although the plants don't care for this as much, the leaves will quickly mm -hmm. pop off. Just one leaf will not hurt the plant too much. Make a very shortcut short into this uh, structure around the stalk, which I'm forgetting the name of at the moment. And then we put the bag down with the longer tag in the back, down into that slit. And now the ear shoot bag will stay in place as this ear develops and eventually silks will be seen. So this one is nice and safe and all ready for uh, whenever that day will come. When I see silks in here, then I will start looking for tassels to bag so that I can uh, pollinate it the next day. All right, tassels will shed throughout the day, although there's a very strong pulse in the morning. And if you live in a place that tends to get dry and or hot, the pollen can oftentimes die under those conditions later on in the day. So I try to do all my pollinations in the morning. So in the morning, after the dew's off and the bags are dry, I will go through and I will remove the bags, collecting my paper clips. And now I have a bag full of pollen. And you can see there were some tass or the anthers on the tassel that were uh, shedding. So I should have pollen inside the bag. And I'll just run down through this variety doing a half sib um, scenario. I will collect a bunch of bags together and I will composite or bulk all that pollen together. That is not what you normally do if you're trying to maintain uh, a variety specifically uh, for all of its genetic variation. So uh, for instance, if you had several different varieties of some very special heirloom varieties, what we would do is something else. Uh, we would do chain sibbing, and I will show that uh, in just a minute. But first I'm gonna collect a bunch of pollen. Good not to bang them so hard that you break the tassels off. You need the tassels later. Um, if you have bugs in there, sometimes they will break. Uh, if you're very strong, sometimes they will break and it's disappointing. If you're going to work with things in agriculture, get ready for disappointment and how to deal with it. <laughs> Looks like you got one more there. Anyway, you collect all the bags together if you're going to bulk them. Voila. When you're doing a half sib, you have to get all the pollen bulk together. And so um, I take each of the bags and I shake out pollen into bag I'll use for pollinating. It is not the most secure system. There is an absolutely much better one. But half sibbing is used when you would like to have multiple fathers on each ear and it works very well for the situation I have right here.
All right, so now I have one bag that's absolutely filled with anthers and pollen. And it's all ready to go. Here is a shoot bag that shows some silks present. So we know that this one is ready to be pollinated. So I'm going to do the half sib procedure with this ear. It goes like so. Got my pollen all set. All right, so a bunch of anthers came out. They're all covered with pollen. Eh? Yep, I brought it up and I put it back down. Then I reuse those bags. So tassel bag then goes down into the same place. So it's open and surrounding the ear. I pull back the back of it around the stem. And then I use a stapler like this and staple it in place. And now that ear is pollinated and it will develop in place. I know which one was pollinated. If I need special instructions, I can write them on the bag. And at harvest time, I can come to all of them that are bagged and I know which ones to get and uh, what to do with them. The most secure cross that you can make is one tassel to one ear, a full sib cross. So here's a bag with the pollen from one tassel and I have it ready to go. And here is the ear shoot, the ear. I've got some silks showing through the bag. And to do this with the least amount of potential risk, I get all ready, put the bag over, shake the pollen down, and then I'll staple it in place. Now this lacks the ability to put this bag back on and cover any other silks that might come out, but it is the best I know for making sure that as best as you can do, only the pollen you want went onto this ear. So we wanna wait till the ear's got plenty of silk to show, do it all at once, we're done. Now to maintain a population, what we do is the chain sibbing uh, scenario. So we're going to make not the traditional plant breeder full sibs where we take the tassels from two plants and we put them on the ears of the opposing plant. What we're going to do is take pollen from this plant if it was shedding and put it on this ear here. And then we're going to take the pollen from this plant and put it on this ear over here. So every plant gets used twice, once as a male and once as a female. And we try to make sure every individual in the whole population is represented in our crossing. We wanna maintain all the diversity, avoid inbreeding, and uh, keep all of the, uh, the potential for ongoing improvement and adaptation in that population. Populations are most easy to improve and adapt if they're genetically diverse. They're also most productive when they're genetically diverse, especially with good genetics. So we wanna maintain that, and then our heirlooms will not run out. Whatever we have, they'll stay as good as they are indefinitely. Well, that's a brief overview of corn pollination for uh, doing half sib and also chain sib maintenance of varieties. These are important when we have different varieties we wanna grow at the same time for instance, if you have a research project or a seed bank of some kind. Uh, generally for gardeners, I would recommend just growing one variety at a time. It's so much easier than doing all this hand pollination. But should you take it up, I wish you the best and good luck with it. And uh, happy days in the garden. Cut. <laughs> you gotta get stuff with a thing in it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, good for you. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Mm -hmm. I love it. Man.